is, you know, this is an SDN kind of solution that we've developed. As Arpit articulated the triangle slide, we are partnering on the overlay side with VMware. We are supporting open flow on our switches, so if somebody wants to use a controller to run that. We are doing automation with, you know, L2, L3, all of that good stuff. Now, a lot of other players have come up with uh, controllers, general purpose. What we, when we looked at the market, we said, hey, based on the maturity level of the technology, based on the customer adoption, what makes most sense? So we have designed a fabric, given we are Dell with server storage, we wanted to create a fabric that is highly automated, simple, flexible. So, so that's our goal. And what we've said is let's target OpenStack because that is in you know new and emerging area where people are looking at simplicity and a lot of the cloud admins, server admin types use this. So we've designed this fabric that fits into OpenStack through Neutron plugin. Very simple fabric, does not run any of the traditional protocols. Uh, you know, it's plug and play, it's flexible. So any topology, any kind of servers you can connect, whether it's Blade or Rack, and it's highly program you know, programmable. So REST APIs, you can do all kinds of service insertion and so on. We'll give you a demo. We are very inserting it in a very kind of niche fashion. We don't think it's ready to be consumed in, a, in the entire data center. We are targeting it in racks and maybe a couple of racks, few racks. And that's the current insertion strategy. As we see more you know, traction with customers, more interest, we are going to expand it. So we'll show you what this looks like the fabric looks like and how it integrates with OpenStack. So Jay will cover that. And does it only support the 9500 or does it support other? No, at this point, this solution is more of the server as we talked about, okay. you know, the in rack, the fabric. So this is currently in the in rack, meaning one rack, maybe up to five or six racks. Okay. We are still not going in because I don't think the technology for SDN is completely out there to be able to cover even the fabrics. We will get there, but not Right away. Interesting. Okay, so uh, what we have here is the controller's uh, UI, and I'm going to walk through how the controller UI really looks like, how it is actually uh, something, so something kind of detached from the af fabric controller. The UI is completely REST-based, and um, you can have, you can make changes at it on the fly. You could even use the REST command directly in a browser, run it from there, because the controller is on the southbound, is uh, is talking for the, to the switches, it's talking open flow, and on the northbound, it is completely integrated with the, as a, with the REST APIs. So what we have here is, uh, uh, you, you, you get a sense of what the controller is on the left side, it can work in an active and a backup uh, fashion. And uh, this th top, is uh, is the address bar is is the is where you can can create a rest api query you can build your queries uh, based on uh, with this particular uh, format and then you can click on any of those click a policy and then you can create one of those uh, in the top so that means you can you can actually build a policy uh, or, or a, um, an api on the fly so what we have here is i'm going to start off our demo I'm so far the fabric is down and uh, just a second so the fabric is right now in a, in a detect mode and I'm going to set that up okay Is all the uh, setting up the demo, so it's not the actual product experience. <laughs> Curse of the live demo. So, what we see here is that I just turned on the management interfaces, the switches have just been rebooted, and the fabric started, starts to get discovered. 
and uh, what we have here is on the top there are the spine layers with, with some uh, virtual link connectivity between the switches on the switch on the switches I'm going to show you hover over the mouse over these and you get more details on what kind of switches those are these are the this is the 4810 that's your MXL in the whole fabric and it just discovered that there are two nodes which are running Havana right now and it has two VMs associated with it and uh, this particular construct here is your virtual link trunking so uh, traditional networking we have the M lags and the virtual v what we have the VLT in this land what um, this whole thing is a construct that means there is really no protocol running on the switches directly the VLT protocol is really something that's running on the controller and since the topology is already known to the controller we already know that uh, you can have multiple paths from from the servers to the switches and from the leaf switches to the to the spine switches so there are multiple paths are available to it you can have a multi-path link to it from the servers and the servers can do a NIC team um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, OpenStax horizon dashboard we will go into the one of those existing tenants um, and maybe fire up some instances here let's uh, create about two instances and I'm going to boot it from a certain image the networks have already been created in the dashboard and I'm going to associate that one of those networks with this and now the instances are booting up and as we refresh this particular we will see that it's just been discovered so we have the tech field day VMs just popped up here they've been put on two different nodes and uh, what we could do is moving forward we will create a path trace a flow of a certain flow uh, on, from any one location so let's just take an overview of uh, of all the endpoints so this is everything in the network now this is going to show you some of those endpoints also some physical endpoints now this again I am going to fire up another script just to detect the edge switches or some of those uh, uh, some of those traffic generators so some traffic generation from just generally like an XCI interface or something they've uh, they've been just been detected and those physical interfaces are popping some traffic from one source to another destination and the nice thing about that is that it's going to have some sort of flows associated with it and this way you would be able to uh, look at all the flow counters all whatever is flow flow is terminating or originating from that endpoint now it's kind of building out the complete link for the whole uh, query that we want to see and this query is actually really building out on uh, what is your source and I want to see this destination and just trace a flow for that whole flow um, for that particular flow so what it just did was trace the path from the source to the destination from within the fabric so that's how your traffic is really flowing for that particular flow and uh, the other thing that you could do in this thing is the is the fabrics uh, service insertion for a firewall and that part is in, in very simple steps what you could do is just create some identify some edge switch where your firewall is, con is is actually located and this is what I'm trying to do here is a is a provider level uh, service policy for a firewall I'm going to insert a middle box we will call it um, a sonic wall firewall in here so this particular firewall is cons is um, is dual homed so we just identify the interfaces which are going into the firewall and some the traffic from where the firewall actually sends it back into the into the fabric
okay so now when we now let's take a look at this now you've created on the this is the dashboard where you have a layout of the whole provider so there could be multiple providers in this active fabric man, uh, uh, controller so you have a top level root provider you could have multiple instances of OpenStack and within each OpenStack uh, uh, instance there are multiple demos uh, or tenants uh, associated with it each with the, some sort of certain hosts and some networks associated with it and uh, we will go ahead and take a look at at, um, at, the, at the map of this whole network. What you just see that we just created a sonic wall edge interface on this one and moving forward we could hack, actually create a coarse grain flow. We could associate one of the root providers, give it a source MAC or a destination MAC and so far and then you could actually do a redirect from this point onwards. So the same way you do something like port mirroring and other stuff, you could have any other middle box insertion be it a WAN optimization or could be a load balancer. Once you have a, a, a basic edge identified you can create a coarse grain flow and then you match a policy around with it. So that's what we've, we've, we have so far. But you're, and you're I could go into more this, details if we... You're doing Mac rewrite to get to, to, to actually deliver content to that device you're doing service chaining with? There is no actually service chaining right now is not being done. It's a, there's a single policy being inserted into the network. So I don't chain it from, end, from one service to another. Right now what we are doing is flow redirection. Yeah, and the flow no, is no, getting no redirected map. from we identify a flow we identi we know that this is your exit point that's where you need to ingress in and, and then we send that flow redirect that flow into that sonic wall and then it just does its thing traffic comes back inside what what v switch configuration protocol are you using so this one is particularly based on uh, the type driver of vlans and I know there are other uh, options available like VXLAN and other stuff also. Uh, but this not, is particularly not, in, not encapsulation. Okay. The specific configuration mechanism for the vSwitch. Um, for this particular vSwitch, I'm not sure what this particular would be do using here. I think it's probably using some basic VLAN configurations in this case. It's, it's definitely not doing GRE or any encapsulation. Oh, are happening. I'm missing something big here. We have the engineers here, so maybe do you have the answer? <laughs> I hope you do. <laughs> uh, there is no vSwitch involved as such. All we're trying to do is uh, divert it to an appliance okay. and get it back from there and head it out to wherever it's supposed to go. Okay. So it's just like a bump in a wire, really. Okay. So no, no, no vSwitch integration at this point? Not, not at no, this point. Exactly. Okay. So this is just purely based on the physical switches. So uh, there's no real communication going on with the vSwitch. We actually just talk with the OpenStack through Neutron. And whatever neutron exposes us, uh, give, gives us, then that's what we do. So you'd probably so like if I had a if I had a VLAN I wanted to provision on one node, I would have to create a policy that recognizes that VLAN on ingress and then marks it through a flow entry, basically. Right. So that part is a lot of those VLAN associations with a certain tenant network is actually done in the Nova dashboard itself. Mm -hmm. So the Nova dashboard tells us tells you that this is the segment that you need to provision. And uh, that's your uh, external network. That's where you. Uh, that's the VLAN that you need to use for external, like the floating IP or something. So that's what we do. If it is a floating IP, we expose it to the northbound wherever it's going to be uh, go talking to the legacy network. And if it is, has a, has a local significance, uh, we just create the path. So the whole thing is that we are not creating any uh, uh, reactive flows in this case. We are really creating a proactive path in the whole network. So the sonic wall, that was a physical device in this configuration. Correct? Exactly. Yes. So you said you weren't doing any Mac rewrite? Mm -hmm. There is no Mac rewrite. So, it's so, a so how do we get the how do we get the traffic to be accepted by the sonic okay. wall? Okay. So it's all done based on the source port. So it is identified as to which port is facing workloads and which uh, port is facing the appliance itself. So the rules are kind of based on, you know, uh, am I coming in from an appliance port or am I coming in from a workload connected port? So, and the fabric knows about it. So, and that's how the policies are built. So if you're coming in from uh, a workload port and <laughs> you have, you're going through that bump in a wire kind of scenario, then it directs you to the appliance. And if you're coming from the um, appliance, then you know that you already did your policing and you know whatever else you wanted to do on that appliance. So it just heads towards the destination at that point. 
So you're saying basically the firewall is, is operating in transparent mode. Exactly. 